yeah so um uh i was uh talking to um martin lately you know uh, martin scorsese you know I, I let him borrow my vacation beach house in las vegas um and uh he was telling me that he is really really worried um lately that uh Harold and the Purple Crayon might dethrone him as one of the greatest directors of all time. I was trying to tell him, I'm like, Martin, you got nothing to worry about. Um, Cause you know, you, you lie to him, he's older. And uh, he's, uh, I was like telling him, was, like, maybe we need to find like you a children's book to like adapt. So uh, look forward to uh, Martin Scorsese's uh, The Hungry Caterpillar coming out next year. Hello everyone and welcome to episode three of the Econ Film Society podcast. Um, we're so excited to be back. We've got some great movies. Um, we have had, unfortunately, a bit of a rollout in the cast. Um, Sebastian is in Toronto mm -hmm. for the rest of the summer, but he will be back for the next episode at the end of August. We'll Miss you, talking. Sebastian. Yeah, we do. Come back. We, we miss you a lot. And um, Evan is cease to exist no longer with us he's still alive he's just dead to us yeah that was an insulting no we're kidding we love you Evan. <laughs> um we want also come back uh, episodes <laughs> uh podcast episodes so come back soon um jason yes is our new summer worker projectionist and intern and beautiful person yeah uh all, all, all around guy yeah he does everything yeah it's fantastic I, I i do it to the best of my abilities and um, he's also the cinephile i don't know if you can say that absolutely. yeah absolutely a registered cinephile <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so jason yes what is your favorite movie that you watched at the yukon theater uh this month this past month this past month um Let's see, what did I, uh, that I've watched here? It was probably uh, La Chimera. I think we had that uh, last month. It was a wonderful, um, I think it's Italian. Yeah. yeah, Italian film. I know they speak Italian, but sometimes, you know, that doesn't mean anything. Um, but yeah, just super intriguing. Um, Josh O'Connell is awesome in the lead role. Uh, yeah, fantastic movie. Um, it was shot on original film. It was. I think it was like 32 millimeter or something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. It was beautiful. It's yeah. a gorgeous movie. Oh, my if God. If you haven't seen it, um, I'm sure we'll bring it back to the Yukon Theater at some point because it's just such a good movie. So keep an eye out for that. If yeah. not, watch it at home. It's fantastic yeah. and beautiful. And we love independent movies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so I would say runner-up is also just because I know it didn't get too much love when it was here. Um, I saw the TV Glow. Great movie. Uh, very gorgeously shot, a wonderful uh, queer film, uh, a lot more experimental than I expected, but great all around, good soundtrack. Um, one of the few times I can say Justice Smith was one of my favorite actors in the movie. <laughs> that doesn't happen all that often. I didn't get a chance to see it, but... Uh, That's what I'm talking about. I would poke my head in every once in a while. Just hear all the screaming. <laughs> It's a very loud and screechy movie, so be warned about that. But it's still very, very good. Highly recommend it, especially if you're into um, like uh, horror movies. If you um, if you're a fan of like Goosebumps, it does a lot of loving send ups to that as well. And sort of weird body horror. Yeah, 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 yeah. Goosebumps meets Videodrome meets uh, Phoebe Bridgers. Good yeah, movie. good movie. Um, on that note, yes. let's get into what are we bringing into the movie theater this coming month? Uh, this coming month, um, well, I think we should start off on one that's already here, already like widely successful. Mm -hmm. It has been a packed house four nights in a row. Uh, that is, of course, Deadpool and Wolverine, the uh, 34th film in the MCU. Uh, the introduction of Deadpool into the MCU, as well as the introduction of Wolverine into the uh, MCU. So yeah, they were both owned by Fox. Before. They were, they were, they were Fox boys. Um, so yeah, if you are a Marvel fan, if you are a Deadpool fan, um, if you're an X Men fan, 
Um, I would highly recommend it. Have you gotten a chance to see it yet? I haven't yet. Okay, yeah. I've seen some reviews and it looks, it looks really great. Just a fun, good it, Yeah, just all time. around fun experience. Yeah. It's funny, it's, um, it's a rated R, so if you are a parent watching this, be aware of that. It is quite gory. Um, and they do say the they say the taxes word a lot. All, all the words. Yes. Apparently. Can I swear on this? Um, I wouldn't. Okay, I can always bleep it. Yeah, we can bleep it out. Yeah, we can, we can replace it with like worse out. words. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like taxes. Yeah, just you know, tag them with the with the e something tacky stuff. Yeah, so it's rather. Yeah. I would. Uh, I'll keep it clean. We'll cut it out. Yeah. Um. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see that. I'm yeah. probably gonna go tomorrow night. Yeah. Probably gonna go and see that. I'm gonna see if I can get some friends together to watch watch oh, yeah. movies. I struggle getting my friends to watch movies at the movie theater. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is, but yeah, uh, yeah. I know I'm. I was very much in the same place. Where it's just like something about getting more than three people to go to one place at one time seems to be like an impossibility this is my favorite place ever yeah how is it not everybody's favorite place for real how does every, how does not everybody love this place in yeah. the same way that i do so it's we've we put so much care into like making it better than how it was we worked so hard yeah <laughs> well and i mean like i know it's not perfect but you know we do what we can but and, like we're we're trying our asses off, and we love this place. We we love the fact that we can show movies like uh, Deadpool and the many others that we will talk about. So stay tuned after this break. Um, cool. Without further ado, I am most excited to watch Sirocco and... And the Kingdom of the Winds. Yeah. That's it. He's so excited he forgot the full title. I know. That's I, that. I that's that's that adrenaline pump into your brain. No, exactly. Um, stage fright. Emmer fest. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. No, it, it looks beautiful. It looks. It looks me, wonderful. Like um, I saw Sadie um, editing. Uh, Sadie is one of our other um, interns. Hi, Sadie. She's not gonna watch this. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I saw her editing like some of the. Uh, trailers that we're going to be putting out on Instagram pretty soon, um, and yeah, it looks gorgeous. If you are a fan of uh, Studio Ghibli, um, we were remarking that it kind of also looks like um, if you saw Bee and Puppy Cat, mm -hmm. either both the YouTube and the Netflix series, but like more yeah. hallucinogenic. More, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. So like, Ghibli meets uh, Bee and Puppy Cat meets Midnight Gospel. I was gonna say Pendleton Ward. Yes, yeah. we're on the same wavelength. Yeah, it yeah. looks fantastic and incredible and yeah. weird and totally suitable for kids and families. Yeah, but in a very hallucinogenic way. Yeah. Which looks so yeah, no, great. it's like, yeah, if you like, if your kids love like Adventure Time or uh, regular show or Gravity Falls, they'll probably love this movie. I want the poster. I do too. I hope we get like a bunch. We're gonna have to fight for that. Yeah. Probably. Send us some boxes in. Yeah. We'll convert this tiny stage to a boxing ring. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll, um, we'll do it for the Instagram. Poster fights. Poster Thank fights. Um, yeah. Um, oh, we should probably say what it's about. Because, it, yeah, it's not, it's not. I just see the Oh, it, it, yeah, it, yeah. Visually, it's gorgeous. And I think that is worth the price of admission. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it is about a mother and daughter who get transported into a children's book. Um, and have to find their way out through the wizard Sirocco. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sort of like that, um, it also reminds me of the, the, the old Beatles movie, the, the Yellow, Yellow Submarine. Submarine. Yeah. yeah. It's one of my favorites too. I still haven't seen it. Oh, it's, it's beautiful and it's, it's mm -hmm. got that same sort of style with some visuals. And mm -hmm. Anyways, um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Yeah. I'm um, very oh. excited about that one clearly. I do want to talk a little bit about it. We, sure. we got time. We can talk about it. Because yeah. I want to talk about it. I did research. I want to show yeah. it off. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's directed by uh, Benoit Chiu. Mm -hmm. Chiu, 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 French. Um, uh, who directed uh, Aunt Hilda, which also looks fun and sweet. Um, I just watched a brief trailer in that. It wasn't in English. I don't know what it is. Um, but the studio 
uh, who is working on this, as well as one of the writers, Alan Gang- Gagnol, um, is responsible for a movie that we've shown at ALF before, um, A Cat in Paris, mm-hmm. which I really liked. I thought that was a similarly gorgeous movie. Um, very little dialogue, if I remember, to no dialogue, um, but still tells like a really interesting story just about a li- life in a city and just a cat just wandering through it and yeah like i said beautiful visuals that one also had great music um i forgot to look up who the composer of this movie is but uh from what i've seen it sounds like it's also going to sound great um and yeah. if you're interested in the cat in paris we actually have that dvd in the yukon film society yes. DVD collection that you can rent at any time with any membership uh yeah uh so sirocco came out last year it was a 2023 film um, but it was really only had a European release and a very limited North American release, just a couple of um, festivals, I believe it only showed at. Uh, and it was recently acquired by uh, G Kids, which is the distributor for a lot of recent uh, Ghibli movies, like Boy and the Heron is through G Kids. They also uh, did the dub of um, uh, Boy and the Heron, so they're responsible for. Robert Pattinson doing the goblin voice. And I thanked him for yes. every day. I still, every time I hear that voice, I'm like, how is that not Willem Dafoe? I know he's in the movie, but that's not him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah. The guy, uh, isn't he, he's the guy from Twilight, right? Yeah. Uh, I think he's from Harry Potter. No, he's a, he's a vampire in Twilight. He's also from Harry Potter. He's in Harry Potter? He's in the fourth one, I think. I don't know. I haven't is seen it. Cedric Diggory? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Um, I I've only seen one, two, three, and seven part two. So. Yeah, good stuff. So Robert Pattinson, <laughs> yeah. wizards, vampires, and little goblin dogs. We're so off topic. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was kind of on topic. Yeah, none of that has to do with Sirocco. Um, I did look up the English voice cast. Um, I didn't recognize any of the voices, but I think two of them are like career um, voice actors. I think one of them might be in the Persona games, but you know, that's every voice actor's in the Persona games. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, when, it, when it initially came out, it did win uh, Best Feature at the Annecy International Awards. And uh, it also won to do, do, do the Best the Grand Competition uh, Award, which I believe is like the um, Palm d'Or equivalent of the Zagreb World Festival of Animated Films. Cool. Yeah, which um, I looked a little bit into. I was unfamiliar with it, but apparently if you're into smaller animated films or even bigger animated films, they have all kinds. Uh, that's one of the big ones to be in, as well as like the International Animated uh, Film Festival, I think it's just called. You guys in there. Um, but yeah, it's got a lot of praise um, from people in the industry and just even just like watch the trailer. You can tell why. Uh, but uh, yeah, the English dub is um, something that is new. We are getting that. Um, uh, I think we're doing We're showing it for two nights. Um, do you remember which nights those are? Is it the 13th, 14th? No. Not this next saturday sunday i think so yeah i I think that's the 13th 14th we will have it on the website um and i'll probably also edit it in if i'm wrong yukontheater.com yukontheater.com uh one night i think is in the english dub and the next night is french with english subtitles i'd love to see both Mm -hmm. yeah i i think i'm going to watch it in french but that's because i am uh I'm a staunch subs, not dubs person, but that's also for just reasons of I, I like things being seen in their original vision. We can debate that later, off camera. Okay, got it. Sub dub fight coming to our Instagram. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. We're making progress. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's really all I had on that. Cool. Um. Do you want to talk about the Great Escaper? Let's Great Escape this sidetracked conversation into the next one great escaper is um it was also a i think late 2023 film 
Um, now getting a wider release, which is cool. Um, it is, oh yeah, it was originally released at uh, BFI, British Film Institute's uh, festival, and then I don't think it saw much distribution after that, and now it's finally getting that, which is awesome. Um, it is also being very well received. It's currently sitting at an 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it is a it is the true story of a uh, World War II veteran, uh, Bernard Jordan, um, who f fled his um, retirement home to go visit uh, the 70th anniversary of D-Day in Normandy. Yeah, it is. I think that's a, that's a cool story. Um, but yeah, so yeah, he was like reported missing from his uh, home in, uh, where, I have it down here where it was. Hove. Hove, uh, which is a uh, small uh, town in um, uh, England. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, apparently, sorry, go ahead. Does he escape his retirement home? Yes. Is that what? Yes. I, yeah. I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Um, I looked at uh, mostly at like the um, uh, true story of it. Um, in the movie, it's it says he is a 90 year old who escapes the movie, um, which uh, is making me believe this movie is all lies, because he was 89 when he s escaped. He was 90 when he got back home. He went for his birthday. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think his birthday was like shortly after the um thing. So yeah. I do want to see this movie. Yeah, it looks it looks very sweet and emotional. Um it is the last performance for both Michael Caine and Glenda Jackson. Um Glenda Jackson unfortunately uh passed away in June. Um and Michael Keaton is retired. He is no longer acting, so He's still alive. Yeah, he's still alive. Yeah. Um, um, Michael Caine, by the way, got his uh, name from the was it the Caine Redemption Reform Reformation? Who told me that? Was that you? No. Was that you? Someone told me that he got it from a play. I learned that recently. Caine's not his real last name. Aww. Yeah. That's a fun fact that I learned but didn't write down. Yes. And then come back here and watch The Great Escaper and just watch a bunch of movies about four people committing crimes, which is just a weird sort of niche subgenre that I am all here for. This one's much less of a crime. I don't think they He was reported crime. missing but, and like police resources were used to try to find them. So I, if you count waste of police resources as like a serious crime, then yes, a crime was committed. Old people doing things that young people should be doing. It's a new niche subgenre. Mm -hmm. I'm all here for it. Yeah. Uh, young people need to escape from more retirement homes. <laughs> more old people need to make sting operations. Yes. Which isn't there. Yeah, there you go. Um, cool. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, what's the next movie? It is. The Fabulous Four, Fabulous. speaking of old people. <laughs> Um, the Fabulous Four is a movie directed by Jocelyn Morehouse. It is about uh, three friends who uh, visit for their fourth friend's uh, wedding, and they get up to shenanigans. They are all older actresses. Uh, we have do, 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 do. we have Susan Sarandon. Uh, we have Bette Midler. Uh, Megan Mullally and Cheryl Lee Ralph. Cheryl Lee Ralph, you might recognize from Abbott Elementary. Mm. Um, yeah, that movie that show confused me. Yeah, it's and she's really funny on that show. She's great. Um, but yeah, and then like, yeah, most people know Susan Sarandon and Bette Midler. How could you not? Um, uh, I found out that between the four of them. I think they almost have an EGOT. I don't know if any of them have a Tony, but 
but Susan Sarandon has an Oscar. Bette Midler has too many Grammys to count. And Megan Mullally has uh, Emmys for uh, Will and Grace. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, was just, I just thought that was a fun thing that I... Can you uh, EGOT uh, stands for Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. Is someone who has won all four awards. Cool. Yeah, I think there's, I think it's up to like fourteen or fifteen now, because um, I believe, oh, I'm, um, I'm like, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to cut this because I'm not gonna be able to remember her name, and I feel bad because she's she's an amazing actor. Um. It's not Mary J. Blige. It's we're gonna move on. I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cut this. This is horrible. Or yeah, I'm either gonna cut this or this is just gonna be like a slow zoom on me, just not being able to remember uh, Viola Davis's <laughs> name. Viola Davis is an egon. <laughs> I think she's the most recent. You got that. I did it. You got that. Go me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this this movie, um, Fab, uh, Fabulous Four or Fab Four, not to be confused with the Beatles, which we talked about earlier. Yellow Submarine. It's everything is circular. Everything is energy. Yes. Um, yeah, it looks it looks fun. It looks like a a light watch. You know, kind of a. Um, a less extreme hangover is kind of the vibe that I got from it. Um, Weekend at Bernie's is that any day. So. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Come check that one out. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah, we'll have it for, I think we're having it for just a couple of days. I don't think we're having it for all for a week. I think we only have like three or four showings. Um, but yeah, yukontheater.com. We should have written these down. <laughs> oh, well. Um, yeah, so do you want to move on? Do you want to talk about long legs? I, don't, I have been trying to stay away from as much long legs lore as possible. So why well, I don't I don't have much. I also was trying to stay away, which I, was I a pain. It. it was a pain trying to research it, but also not learn anything about it. it seems so good. It looks very good. Um, I have enjoyed uh, Oz Perkins like uh, past couple of movies. Um, I didn't really enjoy Gretel and Hansel, but I love Black Coat's Daughter. I thought that movie was awesome. Um, and the pretty thing that lives in the house is also pretty good. <laughs> um, uh, Oz Perkins is the director, um, I forgot to say. He is also the um, son of Anthony Perkins, um, who played Norman Bates in the original Psycho, oh. and Psycho 2, and 3, and 4. He also directed Psycho 4, I think. Nepotism? Kind of, I guess. He was also in Quigley. If you know what Quigley is, it's a movie about Gary Busey dying and being reincarnated as a dog. Well, kind of like um, Shaggy Dog. Like uh, Shaggy Dog. Da. Nine Lives with Kevin Spacey. This plot has been done like a million times. <laughs> <laughs> but Quigley is a cute little Pomeranian being voiced by Gary Busey. Well, he's not being voiced by Gary Busey. They don't do voiceover. They do Gary Busey on all fours with a collar and then sometimes it's just a Pomeranian. So back to Long Legs. Back to Long Legs. I would imagine that movie uh, heavily inspired Long Legs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the Long Legs of the Pomeranian. Yes. Um, long we were, Legs, yeah. I know Long Legs is going to be good because mm -hmm. everybody I know has been asking me if we're getting Long Legs. We have been we're getting so many requests for Long Legs. I'm long so glad long. we've added dates. We were originally going to do a one night only. We have added uh, three more dates, I think. Yep. And if you show up, we'll probably add more. Yeah. If, if we pack this house, then we'll bring it back for longer. I've proven Andrew wrong a few times on how popular movies will be. And let's do it again. We will push. We yeah. will push for long legs. Um, he I told me Deadpool wasn't going to be that popular. Can you imagine? <laughs> he was like, it's not going to be that popular. It's rated R. No one's coming for it. And it's like, it's our highest selling movie of the year. And it's only been here for like five days. <laughs> I don't know 
anything about long legs. I don't want to know anything about long legs. I know, I know that it's going to be good. Yes, I know it is about an FBI agent who is chasing a serial killer, a la like Silence of the Lambs esque plot. Yeah, but it seems like from the trailer that I watched, it seems like there's there's more. There is more of a super, yeah, more of a fantasy supernatural, supernatural element to going it. On, so. Yeah. I don't know what that's about, but that's the mystery, I guess. Yeah, I know. That's that's what I also really did not want to uh, get too much into. I know uh, Nick Cage is Nick Cage. in it. Um, I love Nick Cage. I love Nick Cage. He's great. I yeah. watched Adaptation recently, and he is oh. fantastic in that. I watched Renfield recently, and he's also a lot of fun in that. Didn't see Dream Scenario. Oh, he's really good in Dream Scenario. I it. It's one of those like few times where like watching Nick Cage where I was like, I forgot i was watching nick cage for a while mm. like he really is like that he's really transcends in dream scenario good actor bad actor i think he'll be good in this one he's been in the cage practice. good or bad there is no answer i'm a sexy cat people who get that get that <laughs> um uh he also said he never wants to play a serial killer ever again I mean, yeah, you open up the IMDb page and you, you see it. I guess so. That's, yeah, that's, all, that's all you need to know. That's, I guess I'm not that yeah. Um, oh, I did know the soundtrack is produced is composed by a guy named Zilgi. Um, is that a stage name? It is um, for Elvis Perkins, who is Oz Perkins' brother. And wow. did you know Elvis Perkins is the son of Anthony Perkins, who played um, Norman Bates in Psycho? Elvis Perkins has nothing to do with Quigley. Come on, Aww. we're professionals here. Be be serious. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and finally, I think there's one more movie that we're excited about. Two, Two more. more. Well, I mean, I don't uh, know how. I didn't research it. You did all the research. I did all the research. Harold and the Purple Crayon. Harold and the Purple Crayon. How could I forget? <laughs> we were talking about talking about it at the start. Yes. Um. Hasn't this movie been in the works for like 35 years or something? Or yeah, uh, I believe I saw like, yeah, it was supposed to come out in like 1995. Um, it was originally supposed to be uh, half animated, probably stop motion, I would imagine, because Henry Selleck was supposed to direct it, mm. director of uh, Coraline and, and Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, Tim Burton did not direct Nightmare Before Christmas. Henry Selleck did. Tim Burton just produced it. Hot it's, topic issue. I know, it's a hot topic. Yeah, it's a hot topic issue. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was like uh, passed to him, uh, both uh, Amblin, uh, uh, Steven Spielberg's. <laughs>